Hello and welcome to another React tutorial. Today we are building a simple memory game where you flip open some cards, which in this case have some cute cats behind them. You flip open some cards and if cards are matching, they're going to stay flipped. So we have a brown here and we have a brown here. We also keep track of remaining cards here. And when we match a pair, that specific card is going to be removed from the remaining cards list. We are also tracking the number of moves used here. We are first going to make a simple version which uses just numbers and after that I'm going to show you how to set this up to use some placeholder images which these cats are or if you don't like cats or you like robots or you like humans you can use those as well. The default version is just 5 by 2 grid so we are going to make just the default version of five different cards. If you want to customize this you can do that later. If this sounds interesting to you make sure to give this video a like, subscribe if you're new and let's jump into it. For this project I have set up a simple react app here you using Vite. If you don't want to use Vite, you can use something else. I went ahead and removed everything that I don't need. So we have an empty app.css file. We have an app.jsx file with just, which just returns a div with the class name of app and it just says hello world here and you can see it here in the browser as well. We have our main uh, main.jsx file which just renders everything and I went ahead and removed everything else. We are going to create a simple folder structure here. So I went ahead and made a components folder and a styles folder. You don't even need to structure this, uh, this in folders because it's a very simple app. I'm going to add a new file in components which is going to be called memory game dot jsx and in there I'm going to initialize a simple react component and I am going to add a new file here called called memory game dot CSS and we are just going to import it here. So import styles memory game dot CSS in our app CSS. I'm just going to paste some simple CSS, which is just going to set up our background colors and our font and to center everything. So I'm importing a font here from Google fonts. It's called uh, Ubuntu mono or Ubuntu mono, however you pronounce it. I'm just setting up our background to a dark shade of uh, blue, setting up the color text to white. This isn't necessary. This is just so, you know, the final thing looks a bit nicer. If you are making this on your own, you can of course change this. We are of course going to add some CSS here as well, but we are going to do that later. So before we start doing anything, we need to have some items that we are going to be displaying as cards. Our items are going to be in a constant which is going to be called items and it's just going to be an array of numbers from one to five. For this to work we need to have these elements doubled so we need to double them but we also need to shuffle them so the memory game is different every time we start the game. In order to do that we need to use a shuffling or sorting algorithm and we need to take this array double it and send it to our shuffling algorithm which will shuffle the elements. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to add another constant here called all items. You can of course skip this step. You can set your items to whatever and shuffle them immediately. I'm just doing this for uh, readability and if you want to change the items you can easily do it. So here we are going to say all items equals shuffle and inside of the shuffle we are going to say an array and we are going to spread items and spread items again. So spreading operator, if you've never used it, it basically takes all the elements and spreads spreads them as the name implies into separate elements and when we are basically spreading this twice it's basically creating a new array which contains all elements from this array and then again all elements from this array which is the same array so we are basically uh, making a new array with double the items and shuffle is the function which is going to be our sorting or shuffling algorithm. So over here we are going to say import shuffle 
shuffle from shuffle. So in our source folder, we are going to add a new file called shuffle.js. And since I have no idea about any shuffling algorithms, I went ahead and basically found this on Stack Overflow. You can just copy paste this from here, or if you don't want to bother copying directly, I am going to leave a link to the Stack Overflow page where I found this algorithm. So it's a bit easier for you. So we are importing shuffle and we are saying all items are our new shuffled items here. So we are going to we're going to remove this hello world text from here. We are going to make this an empty fragment and we're going to say here is a div with a class name of cards container and in the cards container we are going to map through all items so we can display the cards and in there we are going to need the item and the item index and we are going to return a div which has a key of index and for now it has a class name of card we are going to add some different stuff here in the class name later to make it flippable. And this is also going to have an on click event, which just says handle click. And this is going to be our new function, which we are going to implement a bit later. So just for now, let's say const handle click and just do nothing and inside of this div we are going to have another div which is going to have a class name of backside it's going to be an empty div and we are just going to put our item here which is going to be our number and of course for any of this to be visible we actually need to import our memory game from our component and instead of hello world we are going to say memory game and now as you can see we do have our elements here and they are being shuffled if i refresh the element order is going to change we can actually go ahead and set up our css now if you don't want to do css you can just copy paste this i am going to leave a link to the css file so you can copy paste it or you can jump to a different point in the video we'll see it on the screen right now so we are going to say cards container it's going to be a display of grid it's going to have a grid template columns of repeat 541 fr we will justify content to center we are going to set a gap of 10 pixels and we will add a slight margin of 1m0 so we can see we have a grid now for the card we are going to say background color and i'm just going to copy paste my background color here and the background color is not changing because i call this cards and it needs to be card so you can sort of see it <laughs> being changed there but uh you will see it right now when we add some spacing there we are going to add a border of one pixel solid gray width is going to be a 100 50 pixels and height is going to be 200 pixels you can now see the cards properly so i'm just going to pull this a little bit i did not go through and made this responsive because i didn't feel like i needed to but if you want to make it responsive there's a challenge for you card is also going to have a display of grid it's going to have align items center and justify content center we are going to have a border radius of two pixel. We are going to have an animation here. So we're going to say transition all linear 0 0.3 seconds. And we are actually going to do a transform rotate 3D here with 0, 1, 0 and 180 degrees, which is as you can see going to flip the cards around the y axis and we're going to say position relative overflow hidden this is going to come into play later when we add images we are also going to add a hover effect which is going to set our cursor to pointer 
we're also going to raise our cards a bit so to do that we need to keep our rotate so to keep our rotate we are just going to copy paste this but we're also going to say translate and we're going to say minus two pixels minus two pixels so now when I hover, you can see the cards are moving a bit. And now for our backside, because we need to have a back side, we of course don't want to see the numbers unless we click on the card. So for the back side, we are going to set the same background color as the card. We need to say that this has a position of absolute. We need to set the width to 100% and the height to 100% as well. And now you can see the back side is there. We also need to say back face visibility equals to false. Or sorry, back face visibility is going to be hidden. This will make sure that we can actually see everything properly when we start flipping stuff around. And we are going to have two more selectors here. This one is going to be card, which also has a class of flipped. And we are going to have a flipped card, which has the backside inside. When we click on a card, we are going to mark that card as one of the two selected cards, because we can only have two cards selected at any given moment, maximum. So either zero or one or two cards can be selected. And we're going to say when we click the card, it's going to be selected and it is going to have a new class assigned to it, which is going to be called flip. So we are going to have a card which also has a flipped class and for that card we are going to say transform is going to be unset which is basically going to reset the rotation and for the transform we are also going to have transform style which is going to be preserve 3d and the flip the backside selector here is just going to have one line which is going to be the same transform rotate 3d which is basically going to rotate just the backside and we are going to be able to see the front side and not the back side anymore. So like I said, we are going to keep track of state of our selected cards. So we need to import use state. And in here we are going to say const first card set first card equals use state. And for now, we're just going to leave this empty and we're going to say const second card and set second card it's also going to be equal to use state we are also going to keep track of remaining cards so remaining cards and set remaining cards which is going to be use state and in use state we are just going to pass in the items so these are the five original items that we are starting with and we are going to keep track of our moves so const moves set moves equals use state and originally moves are going to be zero now for the first card and the second card we're going to have a state which is not a simple number and we are going to create it here as our default state because we are going to use it a few times in code so default state for the card is going to be an object which has an index which is going to be set to null and it has a value which is also set to null and we are going to use that default state for our first card and our second card and i'm missing a t here so first card index is going to be which card of these 10 cards we have clicked on and for the value is what is the actual value below this so when do we actually use the first card and the second card well we want to handle our cards being flipped through clicking on them so when we click on a card we want to say if i clicked on this one i want to say this is the first card and when i click on this one relatively fast it's going to be set to the second card and then we need to check if the cards are equal value 
And if they are, they are going to stay flipped. So we have two instances where cards are staying flipped. They are either the first card or the second card, which need to be revealed, or they are equal and the pair needs to stay flipped. So that's what we're going to do. Instead of class name being just card here, we are going to add curly braces here. And instead of card, we are going to add back ticks. So card is always going to be the class, but also we are going to add a dollar sign here and another set of curly braces. And we are going to say first card dot index equals to this index. So this index of this card. So this card has been flipped or second card dot index equals index or the remaining cards do not include. So includes this item so we are saying if the first card dot index equals to index or the second card index is equal to index or the card is not in the remaining cards so we have found the pair and we find when we find the pair we are going to remove the card from the remaining cards and we need to put this inside of a set of brackets and say and flip and they are all flipped because this needs to be item so now to handle the click we are actually going to say this is going to call a function handle click and inside we're going to say it's going to pass in the index and the item so likewise this is going to accept index and value and we are actually going to move this over here and we are going to add use ref in our imports because we need to use a ref and why do we need to use a ref because we need to set a timer and our constant timer is going to be equal to use ref now we need to use a timer because when you click on a card you have limited amount of time to find a pair so the cards need to refresh or reset after a certain amount of time in my case i set it to one second so we need to set a timer that says when i click on this card or any card we need to start a timer and when the time runs out we need to flip this card back but we we also need to cover a case where we click this card but we click on the second card and now if you have just one second to do everything it's going to feel a little bit too fast so when we click on the second card we need to reset the timer so you have another second so you basically have sort of two seconds a little bit less than two seconds to find the pair which is I think pretty reasonable and also if you click on a card and you don't do anything you just have one second and the card is going to be reset if we don't set up the timer through use ref the timer is basically not going to work because we are having component refreshes and the timer is always changing and we don't know which timer to keep track of and we need to constantly have the same timer and we need to refresh it so that's why we need to use use ref for our timer and before we do anything with our click handling we are just going to say clear timeout and we are going to input our timer dot current because as you probably know use ref stores its value in the current property so we are clearing out the timer and then we are actually going to set our timer so timer dot current equals and we are going to say set timeout and in the timeout we are going to call a function and the stuff is going to happen in 1000 milliseconds or one second and we are just saying set first card to default state and set second card to default state because like we said we are using the first card and the second card to determine if the card needs to be if, if a card needs to be flipped so if the first card is the clicked card or the second card is the clicked card it needs to be flipped so that basically covers this case we reset the timer and we set another timer which says in one second please reset these we want to flip them back to being hidden so now we need to cover actual cases so what happens when we have a card selected or when we don't have any card selected so we are going to say if first card index equals to null which means we 
haven't clicked on any cards yet so all our cards are in their original positions we need to select the first card but we also have another use case when we need to select the first card and that is when we have both the first card and the second card flipped so we are basically resetting everything and starting over so let's say you clicked on this one it's one you clicked on this and it's two and you realize immediately it's not your your pair you want to start over with the third card and you click on the third card and that's the case when we reset these two and set this one to be our first card so that use case is basically or and we add brackets and in the brackets we say first card dot index is not equal to null and the second card dot index is also not equal to null so we are basically saying yeah we do have both of these cards here and and we want to we want to basically reset them and set the new first card so before we do anything we need to actually reset the second card if we don't do it it's going to give us problem in this use case when we have the both cards selected so second card needs to be set to default state and we are then setting the first card to index and value so the first card is being set with the index and the value that we are passing into our handle click function and and we are just going to update our moves and set the moves to old moves plus one. Now the other use case is else if our second card dot index equals null so we do not have a second card selected but we do have the first card selected so first card dot index not equal to null. and this time we are setting the second card with index and value we are copy pasting the set moves because we are doing the same thing with moves we are setting moves to plus one and then two cards are selected we now need to compare their values and determine if they need to stay flipped so we say if the first card dot value equals to this value so our first card has been set we need to update the remaining cards. So we need to filter them to remove this particular value. So how do we do it? We do set remaining cards and we say remaining cards dot filter. And inside we're going to add a function. Now we can do this because remaining cards returns a new array. So this is safe to do without mutating the original state. And in filter, we say the card that is in the remaining cards needs to be not equal to value. So we are basically saying, hey, take the remaining cards, filter through them, and for each card, you need to find the card that is not equal to this value, and if they are not equal, then they are going to stay in the new array. And if the card is equal, then we are basically filtering it out. And it's not working because we need to set the second card to default state. So now when I refresh, it's working. So you can see the cards are being set properly and being reset properly. So this is basically pretty much all the functionality. If you want to stay with this, you can stay with this. But to make it a bit more interesting, we are Going to add the remaining cards and the moves counter and we are also going to change the numbers to the images so above the card container we are going to say remaining cards dot length is greater than zero and if it is we are going to add a text here saying remaining cards and if there is no remaining cards we are just going to say victory so this is just the text which is going to show the remaining cards and if there are remaining cards we are going to show them and if there are no remaining cards we're going to display victory. So now we need to actually display the remaining cards and we're just going to map through them and we're going to say card and index and for now we are just going to return the card and you can see we have our one two three four five cards here if you want you can actually do a for this use case you actually don't need to do this if you want to go with numbers you can just say remaining cards dot 
join and we are going to join them by a comma and an empty space and you have your remaining cards list here so if you are going with just numbers you can do it just like this and at the end here below the div we are just going to say moves used and we are going to pass in the moves and you can see moves used is zero so when i click on the cards you can see the counter going up so this is four two three one four and four and four is being removed here so that's basically it so now i'm going to show you how you can actually use some images here instead of using an item here in the card we are going to remove the item and put an image tag and for the alt text we are going to say let's say cat and we're going to pass in the index so cat number zero number one number two whatever and for the source we are going to say curly braces backticks https colon slash slash robo hash dot org slash dollar sign curly braces item and i think you can do it just like this so yeah, you can see when I flip the cards now, they are using a default set, which are these interesting looking colorful robots. So you can use a couple of different sets here by adding a question mark, which adds a parameter list. And we are going to say set equals to set four. And when I click, it's actually going to create the cats. So you can try this. There are a couple of different sets. So set two, is these different kinds of characters set three is another different set of characters set four are the cats and set five are humans so i believe there's only five different sets and i chose to go with set four and we can actually set the size of the images by saying size equals 120 times 120 and now they fit nicely here so we are going to take this same image and instead of saying remain cards join here we are going to return to the mapping of the remaining cards and instead of doing a card here we are going to say return this image but we also need to add a key which we are going to set to index and we need to make the cards a bit smaller because they need to go over here and it's going to be a little overwhelming if they are huge so we are going to say 80 by 80 and instead of the item here which is not defined we need to say cards and hit save and now we have the remaining cards which are cats and that's pretty much it that's the whole mini memory game you can definitely improve this by for example making the number of starting cards customizable so you can basically create a super easy mini game with just two pairs or you can make it extremely complicated by you know being able to set it to 10 or 15 thank you for joining me in this tutorial i really hope you learned something new and i really hope you like it if you did like it make sure to give this video a like subscribe if you're new let me know if you want to see something else in the future if you have any project ideas my name is alex and i will see you in the next one